The appointment of a new South Wales transport head has caused a stack of controversy. Oh, it continues to rumble along. What do you think? Can, can, can Josh Murray stay in this no. job? No. I, I think eventually he'll have to fall, fall on his sword. You, you and I two weeks ago predicted all this. We, we, we said two weeks ago it would be a slow burn, there'd be a ha uh, an upper house, legislative council inquiry, and there would be media interest. The, the, the two... Sydney newspapers, the Daily Telegraph and the Sydney Morning Herald have it at front page or near front page day after day. Look, Tim, a transport minister is entitled to appoint the Director General or Secretary of his or her department if they so choose, and they have to live with that. But unfortunately, there was supposedly an open... Um, tendering for this position. There was advertisements put mm. out for it, there are applicants, and the minister intervened. That's what's got them into trouble. They should have just had the courage of their convictions and appointed Mr Josh Murray as the best qualified person. But instead, they rorted the system, and that's what's got them into trouble. I, I, I don't know how this finishes. It's, it's dragged the minister down, and, and now, unfortunately, it's, it's in, in uh, court... The, the Premier, Chris Minns, a good, decent man, who was a former staffer in the Yemen government with this Josh Murray. I think the only way you can short-circuit mm. this is if Josh Murray resigns. And Joe Halen is a bit of a staffer, Chris Minns, too. Uh, he's already had to flip one minister. Yes, yep. And, uh, yep, poor Chris Minns. He's only been in power three months. Mm. He's lost one cabinet minister and he may lose a second if he's not careful. Josh Murray has to go. It's simple as that. OK. We've got Racing Dreams coming on in about an hour and a half. Uh, one of the greatest shows on television. Indeed, <laughs> indeed. Wise. I'll be watching. But the reason why I, I say that is to segue to the next topic. One of the big problems for me, and I suppose I've got self-interest at heart here, is the date of the voice referendum. It's on the day of the Everest. The Everest, would you put something like that on on Melbourne Cup Day? Well, you are very partisan, aren't you? It's well, got to be... Well, you're Saturday. ATC chairman, so we're... we're, we're <laughs> we on can this, live with the voice. We're on this horse together. But I, I just... You, you are a purist, aren't you? You're not happy. Just vote early. Oh, During the, the week, postal vote. And by the way, at this stage, the voice is lost. It's lost. I'm surprised. Yeah. I've spoken to Labor insiders. It's lost. It's not going to get to 50% of the popular vote. They, they're they still hoping they can recover it, but it's more hope than confidence. Should have picked another date, shouldn't I? <laughs> oh, come on. All right, I'll ring the Prime Minister on can your you behalf. Give, can you get Albo, mate. Horse racing comes first. Please, it does. Yeah, you're, you're the sport of kings. Um, now, cost of living. Let's, let's talk seriously oh, about this because I was chatting with a few guys during the week, uh, work in the insolvency space. Retail is really facing a tough battle the next eight to ten months. But that's what the Reserve Bank intended and government policy supports. They wanted to stop us spending. So we've stopped spending and hospitality and food and beverage is feeling it too. It's tough out there, Tim, as you well know and, and you correctly raised the issue. Families are doing it tough. There's three issues that are keeping inflation high. Renters, electricity and interest rates. They're the three. Now, food's coming down, believe it or not, um, because we've had bumper crops in vegetables and fruit. But um, it's still stubbornly high inflation. Wages inflation is, is keeping it high. Oh, we're not out of the woods. Oh, absolutely. You just go through shopping malls and you see signs on windows closed on Mondays absolutely. because we can't staff, we can't operate. Yep. So, yeah... Um, Look, fingers crossed it's not as bad as, as what a lot of people are expecting because it's going to be a very, very difficult passage towards Christmas and beyond. Always good to see you. Thanks, Tim. We'll do it again next week. Indeed.